It's on? Not really. I never it takes some sense. It's delayed a little bit. Anyways, good evening. Welcome to the Wednesday, September 5th. <laughs> Let's get crap out of everybody. September 5th uh, <laughs> meeting of the Weathersfield Planning and Zoning Commission. Uh, would the clerk be kind enough to help me with the roll call? Uh, Chairman Harley. I am here. Vice Chairman Margiotta is home waiting for the air conditioning to get fixed at his house. Uh, <laughs> clerk Roberts, Mr. Hughes, Mr. Oichel. Here. Mr. Hammer. Here. Mr. Humicki. Here. Mr. Dean. Here. Mr. Allard. Here. Mr. Edwards. Nope. Ms. Antoniak. No. Mr. Silver. No. All right, so if my math is correct, we have seven people here tonight and everybody can participate. First item on the agenda is 3.1, a public hearing for application 1991-18-Z, a special permit for 100 Great Meadow Road Associates. Uh, under section 6.7.E, exceptions for outdoor lighting, changing the colors and some rear flood lighting. Would the applicant join us at the microphone, please? And Take a second to introduce yourself and then tell us what's going on. What do you propose? Uh, my name is Chris Henney and uh, I'm the owner of uh, Putnam Park as well as uh, the restaurant River. And uh, first of all, I'd like to apologize. I figured I didn't realize until the agenda came out that I was the only reason that we're convening this meeting. Mm -hmm. And I apologize. I figured with the summer over that there'd be more than just us, so I promise I'll make this brief, or as brief as you would like. Um, essentially, we have two uh, requests, and they both have to do with lighting. Um, the building, when we first built it, uh, provided for lighting of the front facade, as well as the tower side with the south, four floors from four, floors four through seven uh, from the south. Uh, after 30 years, those lights gave way. And so we replaced them with new lights, and the new lights have the ability to change color. And that's because so many commercial buildings, as you know, are going toward uh, being able to change the colors on their buildings. It's, it makes it attractive. It, uh, it, you can make certain statements, for example. Um, at Fourth of July, we, we would plan on trying to do a red, white, and blue. Uh, St. Patrick's Day, we would want to do a green. But predominantly, the colors we would use would be white and blue. Blue because um, we happen to like the way the blue came out. And I've given you a photograph of one of, of how it uh, looks on half the building. Uh, blue because it happens to be the color of our main tenant, CBS. And so they really like the fact that it's blue. and. Um, we want to keep CBS happy, so um, so we want the ability to uh, to be able to. And since we have really no neighbors other than the DOT and uh, and the oil companies, neither of whom uh, really care what we do, it seems like, um, and it doesn't impact any residential areas in town. Um, I would ask that uh, that that be approved. The other part of this is because of all the activity that is now taking place in the back of the building, which never took place before, but now that the deck is there, people are, as you might expect, they want to walk around, they want to walk by the river, and we want to be able to put some floodlights down, uh, pointing down to the ground from the third <clears throat> floor parapet uh, for safety's sake more than anything else because we do get people that are wandering around back there and I don't want somebody to get hurt, or fall or whatever. And it, it gets dark and it's getting dark earlier, which is um, why we want to get those uh, installed as soon as possible. And um, basically that's it. And if, if there are any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. All right, thank you. Actually, I'm gonna ask Peter, even though I didn't give him a heads up here. Would you take uh, you know, three seconds and summarize your? Sh sure, in summary, um, all new lighting requires um, submission of a plan and approval of the commission. Uh, additionally, um, because of the uh, technology that's being used here where the colors can change um, at, uh, over periods of time, uh, you have a provision in your regulations that uh, um, requires a special permit for that kind of an application of lighting. So uh, those are the two reasons this is in front of you. I did include in the memo the criteria. Uh, that you should look at uh, as you uh, review uh, the application. 
Um, but in essence, I, as Chris uh, explained, um, they are uh, retrofitting the existing lighting system, adding some new lights in the back. Uh, Chris, just a couple of questions. Uh, you've got basically two segments to the building, the six or seven story, and then you've got the three story. Correct. Would the three story and or the side of the taller tower also have this uh, technology applied where the colors can change? That's right. All right, so the whole building. Yeah, so that it would all match. Okay. So it would be for the whole uh, property in addition uh, to the lighting uh, that's proposed. So that would be down lighting uh, on the back of the building uh, going down towards the riverfront. Right. Yes. Okay. That's to provide general lighting in the back. Yep. Because right now it's very, especially since it's getting dark earlier and people are staying later, we really are concerned that they, because they, they walk down those stairs and we, we're not going to be able to stop them. They want to walk around on the, by the water. And I think the only, the only other thing that we talk about is the uh, intensity of this lighting when compared to the old technology. It's, it's less wattage than, right. than the originals. And it's, it's more fixtures so that it can wash the building better, but it's less wattage. Right. You mean so it's not as bright? That's what they tell me, yeah. The electricians tell me that. And as you can tell from that photo, that it's not particularly bright, but it does give a nice muted color to it. Rich? Is the expectation that you would change the color like once a day? Uh, I'm sorry? Um, is the expectation that you would change the color once a day rather than yeah, probably. five minutes or Oh, no, no. It would be, it, as I said, it would be probably 99% uh, of the time it would be blue or white. And then <clears throat> St. Patrick's Day. You would have it all 24 say hours. St. Patrick's Day, it better green. be green. Saint yeah, St. Patrick's Day, it would be green. Fourth uh, of July, red, white, and blue. Christmas, red and green. Um, you know, if there's a race for the cure, we might do pink or something like that. Um, this, there'd be a handful of times that it would be a and color none of other it flashing. than that. Hmm? None of it will be flashing at any Oh, point. no, no, no. These don't or flash. changing. Is no, they just, no, the colors simply fade in and out. Yeah, I guess what I was getting at was it was going to be basically a static display. Yes. Rather than something that could be distracting. Oh, no, no, not at all. That's right. correct. Peter, any other buildings in town with lighting of this nature? There were a few. Um, but not to this extent, you know. Um, we've not approved. The yeah, not the, not the full. Sides. No. Um, there are a few that are uh, set up just to illuminate signs, for example, but uh, nothing um, on, on this level. So uh, that's why we wanted the commission to approve this since we didn't want to set a precedent for other property owners in town not that there would be a lot of you know you've only got a hand, handful of buildings that would be six or seven stories in, in height but again this building stands by itself in a part of old weather seal that was actually not near any building other buildings per se and it's not near any residences at all no no there are literally no probably there are little literally no neighbors as you can see from the uh volumes of people in attendance at tonight's meeting so uh, peter what what part of the the regs address the no upward lighting so i we view this as a retrofit of an existing condition uh, normally up lighting is discouraged. There is a section in your regulations, um, specifically um, covering illumination, outdoor lighting. Only because six seven e seems to give a waiver of six seven. Yep. Yeah. So this is a special condition that you know uh, folks can apply for, and uh, um, assuming they meet the criteria that are spelled out in there. Um, but normally, you know, from a dark sky point of view you you would not normally want up lighting of buildings unless it's done in a carefully designed way so this does provide that um exception um so but yeah 6.7 is the provision of the regulations that deal with Mr. lighting Chairman, you, yep. this comment you just made in peter's response is that what the bright skies comment dark skies yep prefer an electric letter because <coughs> i don't 
I've heard that term, and Is I wanted here? to explain. No, it's there's a other there's other language in section yeah. six point seven. It's a couple of pages of. Um, no, you're not supposed so to put light into the sky. All lighting now is supposed downward. to be directed downward. Correct. Right, right. with no leakage. Right. Yeah. So I guess I just you know as we talk about six seven e being a mechanism to get here, does it also get around the other one? I guess is what I'm getting at. And in your mind, it does. It, in my mind, it does. This is also an existing, you know, condition where they had uh, illumination, as was indicated on the front. If you look at the, if you look at the traditional lighting of the building, you can see where the fixtures are, where they're brighter on the front lawn, mm -hmm. on both sides of the building. So that's um, those are the locations. But then you can then if you look at the the blue, you don't get the brightness at the lower levels where it's more of a consistent illumination as you get up the building. So. Technology's come a long way. Yeah. And you're going to keep the Christmas tree up there? Of course. Oh, that's. Want to be sure? <laughs> that's what it's known for is the Christmas tree building, right? Uh, Chris, what do you do with the uh, handicap access? Do you have an elevator in that building? Handicap access? Yeah. Oh, yeah. We have a ramp, elevators. And elevators. Is the lighting going to be different? Over on that section, that's over the left side, isn't it? When people drive in, is that where the elevator is located? Well, we're gonna we're looking. What we want to do is once we get the lighting finished in the front, we, then we want to step back and see what additional illumination we may need on the ground, especially for the handicapped ramp in that area. I've had a couple of people wanting to know and get access to it, and they're a little intimidated by the front curb. Yeah, well, that's we, thirty that's steps what, and agree. Yeah. But it is it is possible for it. Okay, and the lighting there is pretty clear and pretty yes. obvious. Good. Okay, yep. and I think it's something that's understated because I've had people just look at it and not go in because of the steps in the front. It's just a thought. Then out by the river, that will be downward lighting. Is that what you said? Correct. Good. Okay. Excellent. But but my guess is the floods wouldn't be consistent with the dark sky zero. Yeah, I would think so. You know, because that's going to have to be pointed out, I presume. Joe, um, do you leave the lights on all night or just for a oh, yeah. period of time? No, we leave them on because for security purposes also. Okay. I mean, we, we really, um, we, especially with having river there, we want to make sure that uh, we minimize any opportunity for uh, thieves robbers I mean it's a good security for because our tenants come in and out all night they have access to the building 365 days a year 20 24 hours a day and they want that level of security and then it you know light provides security and, and back to a different question so if you're changing the color would it be a different color for a few days depending on if it's a single day holiday or a yeah well if it's for, yeah for example um, we might we might even follow what the Empire State Building does on Christmas. I don't know what their schedule is, but okay. you know they change things. Different. They change it on a Tuesday, and then it doesn't change again until whenever right. that's over. You're not changing it right frequently within a day. Oh no, we wouldn't be changing it that frequently. Other than between the blue and the the white, that may that we may do that. Um, I don't know. We're going to have to play that by ear. But my guess is that that would be the only change that would take place, uh, maybe once a day. Between you mean this white and correct the and the blue, but not like an alternating. No, no, no. Flashing. Okay, and then no. I guess Peter. Oh no, not at all. It, the, these lights don't have the ability to do that, right. even if we wanted to. And we believe me, we don't. Okay. Is there, so, do we still have standards, Peter, that provide some photometric analysis, even of uplighting? I guess what I'm saying, you know, are you yeah. aiming it in such a way that it's stopping at the top of the building and not creating a blue? cloud you know that goes up 100 feet beyond the building for example I haven't been out there the the, the new uh, technology has been installed um, the colors uh, have been um, other than this test pattern uh, they've held off on that um, you know I think you you have a valid point I haven't been out there to look at the lighting to make sure that it doesn't you know project beyond the 
you know, the top of the roof, it but that might be something as a condition. No, we just, we did it last night. That's when we took these photos, okay, and it does not go, it, it doesn't go anywhere. I mean, it just, just to the building. It just simply washes the building, that's all. Thank it's you. not powerful enough to do more than that. Right, I guess what I'm just thinking is if you, if you were really going beyond the top of the building, that's something that could be visible, that, that could be high enough that it could be visible, you know, beyond into other areas. And I guess I'm also just wondering about, you know, aircraft and not creating something that's interfering with them either. No, these are not, uh, these are not made for anything other than just to, to wash a building. That's it. They don't go beyond that. They're not laser pointers. I think they're only. I forget. You have to get a certain number so that it would wash just the face of yeah. the building. You know, because there wasn't and they're only something like. like don't quote me on this, but they're, they're something like, like 70 watts a piece. I mean, it's like almost like a. I mean, it's, it's light. How many of them are there, roughly? We've got. Um, on the left side, we've got four that go to the uh, upper part of the building and three that wash the lower part. And then we've got three on the other side. And then there are maybe eight or 10 on the long section that's on the third floor roof. But again, it's, it's, it's lower wattage than what we had of the original lights. And they never projected into the sky. So I don't, we, we can't imagine. Well, we know it doesn't because we looked at it yesterday. Yeah. Yesterday was the first day we tried it. And we did it to take the picture. The FAA would be out there. Your plan says 52 watts. 52 watts, yep. I'm sorry? 52 watts, it shows on your plan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the ones that you want to put on the back are 70. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> and are those the up lightings or is that No, those are those, down, those lights. down lights. Okay. Down lights. All right. <laughs> All right, so they are actually shown there. Yep. And that's the security lighting. Yep. Okay. So I think what the uh, these two commissioners were indicating is that there's a preference probably if we move to approve that there would be probably some requirements. And I guess what I think I'm hearing is that there may be a, a, a desire to make it no more than once a day in a 24-hour period. You can't change it any more often than once a day. Okay. Right, that that's kind of fine. thing. I'm sorry, I'm kind of, uh, curious, following up on uh, uh, Joe's uh, questioning a few moments ago, uh, have you consulted with uh, you know, Brainerd Airport officials uh, uh, regarding... They approved it. This was all approved when we did it the first time, and these are low, smaller lights than before. So, I mean, it's already been there for 30 years, and we've never heard anything from Brainerd. And there's really nobody to t that we have are required to talk to over there. I guess my only question would be, does the blue color in any way <clears throat> concern them? Because I think they use colored lights indicating runway, for right, example. Right, and this is on a you know, flight path onto a runway, so. I, but it, you know, blue lights on a runway, because I've flown private planes, you can tell a runway from the side of a building. I mean, I don't think there's any way that anybody could mistake this for a runway, period. I really don't. Well, I was a lousy a foggy, pilot, and I still don't. What about on a foggy night? I'm sorry? What about on a foggy night? I, you I don't Friday think night. You, I, <laughs> like a minute. Yeah. Then you better be flying instruments. Yeah, I something. <laughs> George? Just one more thing. Not necessarily the building lights, but my colleague Tony got into, I think, a little bit about walking out front in the steps. Uh, my long longtime life colleague, Joe Hickey, fell out here on the curb going into the parking lot. And one of his, this was like three or four weeks ago. He hurt himself pretty badly. And um, Jeez, that's a he, shame. yeah, he's, he's back. He looks good. He got oh, okay. a little bruises and everything, and they're all taken care of. Uh, but Joe dedicated to this town for a long time. Oh, yeah. Um, no, and I'm just saying, he commented that the, our parking lot lights out here, and also I noticed the curb right out in front. There is a curb here, even though the slope 
sidewalk is between the walkway into here and the library mm -hmm. walkway, and it doesn't come out flat at the curb like the, uh, many corners in town now are required for the blind. Um, but I'm just saying you ought to keep in mind that the lighting out there for your employees is uh, is good from an insurance point of view. Oh yeah, I agree. And one of the so things, sure that well, right. one of the things that we're looking at is for inclement weather, is putting an awning out the the entire from the from the uh, entrance for all the, the way out to the aspect of your. And then we'll have lights in that, and that that'll certainly light up that area yeah. completely. And they'll get adjusted to it as they go. Yes. Well. Okay. Exactly. Yeah, and they're, 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 that'll actually, we're looking into that, and that will make it a lot brighter. A lot brighter. Yeah. Yeah. Because sometimes coming from the building for a while, like in here now and going out there, you, sure. you don't your eyes don't adjust. Right away. Yeah, I agree. Bad weather, particularly. So, one additional topic I, I heard, and I guess I want to put some parameters around it, is the number of colors that you might be using at any one time. And, and keep in mind that this is a first, so there's going to be a second. And so I'd like to, to the extent that we can put our box around what your intentions are, you know, we will be treating everybody fairly when the next person comes in and wants a candy cane stripe. Oh, so the number of colors at one time is that what you, Yeah. I, yeah, I guess so. the most I can imagine is the 4th of July, red, white, and blue. It's kind of what I was thinking, a three-color scheme, yeah. you know, might. I, I, they're never, I can't imagine ever wanting, I'm not even sure that's going to work right. I mean, I may no, abandon that, but. I don't either. Certainly and, and no I don't know more. if my, um, you know, fellow commissioners even think it's worth talking about, but if we should talk about it, you know, and, and then after the hearing is closed, we'll decide whether it's needed. Yeah, I, I guess my personal thought is that, you know, if it's only changing once a day, I'm less concerned about what it is than if it were changing constantly or even frequently to the point where it was you know a distraction rather than a decoration i mean if you know for whatever reason they want to put up rainbow lights on the side of the building you know that's fine with me as long as it's for a whole day or you know more than a day not that you know it, it's red this minute and blue the next minute and white the minute after oh. that yeah, there's no intention of doing that whatsoever, so that's fine. I mean, so I'll acknowledge that. I'm just, you know, honestly thinking about a paint store on the Silestein Highway. It's, it stayed one, one warm for a very long time. It was a bunch of different colors. <laughs> well, I guess I guess that's why we have to pay attention to the six, seven, eight criteria when we're making our determination. Right. So, is any additional questions for the applicant? And is there anybody else in the public that likes to speak? <laughs> um, so, the, so the criteria that you know are presented to us and that are in the the regs are you know the need to uh, address safety and security, um, and for specific enhancements, up, uh, uplighting for specific landscape features, et cetera. So, uh, as we talk about it, let's keep those things in mind. Is there a motion uh, to close the hearing? So moved. Second. Thank you both. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right. Would somebody like to uh, make a motion to start the discussion? Make the motion we approve application 1991-18-Z as submitted um, with the condition that the lighting colors not change any more frequently than once every 24 hours and that the basis for our determination is that um, it satisfies section 67E, A, B, and C of the regulations as the basis for us to allow uh, changes in color on the lighting and uh, also that the downward lighting in the back of the building is uh, prudent from a safety point of view. Second. All right. Thank you both. So a, a couple of the other things that were discussed were, um, you know, did we need to 
ensure that it doesn't go beyond the top of the building, um, either in words saying, you know, can't go any higher than the top of the building, and then the second issue that comes from that, should we have the applicant just request some sort of input from the airport just for the file for staff before it's finalized? Consult with them, you mean? Yeah. Just to in some manner? verify they have no I'd objection or concerns. I would those, accept those are, both of those, and I think they're both good ideas, frankly, especially the second one with the airport, I think, for the applicant's benefit primarily. But I, I do want to make sure it doesn't extend beyond. So if we can have yeah, some of with the staff reviews well. that. Yeah. I'd also add, because it wasn't in the original motion, the, uh, the requirement that the lights will not change more than once in any 24-hour period. That was the was primary one, right? Yeah, right. It was, okay. Yeah. So, so there were two points to add, besides the 24, right? The yeah. light shouldn't put, what, what is it, proceed beyond, or it's not really the right word, but go beyond the, the top of the building? The shouldn't project, project above project. the top of the building. And then get something in the file. Sides, I guess, for that matter, too. It should just be focused on the building yeah. facade okay. and not beyond it on sides or top. Okay. okay. So, so that would be an administrative submission? Staff would have to look at that. Wouldn't the electrical engineer be able to satisfy that or with or without the airport? Or someone's installing these, they would think, know if it's right or not. Well, I think that part of it they could probably, I don't know how you satisfy it, but one way is I know a lighting engineer could give you a photometric analysis that shows you where it's exactly. hitting. Yeah, because I mean they can do it right. when they're aiming down. Before, it right. seems like they should Like the zero clearance there. lighting that we've approved in the right. past in yeah. different parking lots. So they... All right. So who seconded the motion? Tony. Tony. So Tony, do you accept those two additional, I basically do. three items? And we'll just leave the final wording to staff. Yes. Fair enough. All those in favor say aye. 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 Is there anybody opposed? All right. Seven, Thank you. Seven yeas. How's the right. restaurant doing? Thank you. It's doing well? Yeah. Good. Okay. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, we have a problem that everybody has right now. Oh, yeah. Mosquitoes. Good employees. Okay. Okay. They want to all go out front too. Probably. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank all right. Well, take care. Thank you. Keep the piano music moving. Huh? More piano music. <laughs> all righty. Moving on to other business. Four point one. A discussion about draft regulations. What's that? No. <laughs> no. Oh. Something's going right over my head. Anyways, item 4.1, draft regulation amendments, Appendix A, site plan requirements, Appendix B, plot plan requirements, and Appendix E, as built plan requirements. Peter. So for the record, uh, Peter Gillespie. Any, does anybody want Peter to go stand at the, at the microphone? <laughs> I, I, right, see, I see no request for that, so I'll, I'll just <laughs> proceed from here. A nice cozy chair here. Um, I have been uh, working with the town engineer for a couple of months on uh, uh, reviewing and uh, drafting potential changes to the uh, appendix of your regulations as it deals with some of our minimum uh, plan submission requirements. We have, as part of that effort, reviewed a number of neighboring towns. Uh, we've also uh, taken a look at some of the recent plans that have been submitted uh, to, to us for uh, review and approval. Uh, the bottom line is our regulations by comparison are very thin, uh, uh, need updating. They haven't been revised since 2003 when these new regulations uh, came online. So uh, our uh, position was they needed uh, updating um, and they needed a lot more specificity when, as I say, we compared them uh, to other towns and when we compared them to the level of information that we're already getting from um, engineering firms. So uh, we don't think, uh, although the documents are much more lengthy, we don't think what we are uh, suggesting you do is uh, really that uh, cumbersome. Um, it's more getting our regulations in line with the level of information that we should be getting as part of your plan uh, submissions. So there are three aspects to uh, this document. 
Uh, I did give you the, a copy of the existing regulations and I gave you a copy of the proposed regulations, but the three uh, elements of um, what we want to talk about uh, tonight uh, are the site plan requirements, which are the requirements that you get as a commission, so for commercial developments, for multifamily developments, for that type of development. So that uh, is the Appendix A. Uh, Appendix B are the plot plan requirements. Plot plans are typically uh, submitted uh, administratively to staff for new homes, um, you know, basically for projects that don't come to this commission. So it's a, it's a lesser standard, a lesser um, uh, set of requirements. And then lastly, Appendix uh, E, which would be uh, a new set of uh, requirements for as-built uh, record drawings. So after a project is built, before we issue a certificate of occupancy, uh, whether it's commercial or whether it is residential, we require that they submit uh, an as-built drawing which shows the conditions that have been created on the property so that we have a record going forward as to what was built on that property. And more importantly, uh, that it complies with the zoning regulations and uh, the standards um, that um, we approve the plans under. So those are the three uh, things, and hopefully I explained that in a in a basic way for you. So we're dealing with three different sets of requirements um, to have in your uh, regulations. So the only new ones, as I said, are the last ones, which are the record drawing requirements, the as-built. We do not have a standard right now for as-built drawings. We get as-built drawings, but we don't have a standard to under which to review them. So that's well, they, a li little bit of a quandary for us. So What do people usually do, just send you the same plot plan requirements over again? Or? Pretty much. Um, but you'll see as we go through them, we're asking for a little bit more information um, in certain cases um, than, than maybe we actually get uh, right now. So uh, as I said, however, we did, um, we did compare these draft requirements to the level of drawings that we're getting. And as I say, we, we don't think we're asking um, for much more than we're already getting. It's just sort of formalizing um, those those requirements have some submittals been weak because you didn't have enough detail yes requirements. and then we go back and ask more pressure on you guys to keep asking them for this and this and this and especially this. when we don't have it in the regulations to back us up so. uh, are these equivalent to some other community in town uh, you went to several or you talked to many of them are they because I think they my general feeling about them after looking through them I, God, that's all going through these. But uh, do you, uh, th these seem to be almost too much compared to what we had before, which is too little. Yes. And uh, isn't there a happy medium, or do you think you really do need all the detail that you have? So I think the important, um, to answer your question, you're right. We're way at the bottom right now in terms of our standards. This would put us probably way at the top when by comparison. Um, however, um, there are provisions in the regulations where um, some of the requirements can be waived when they're not required, not necessary, not applicable. So I think if we continue that philosophy, um, unless we really, you know, we, we're not in the business of asking people to submit information that we don't need for yeah, any purpose. Yeah, I mean, so, John Miller or people like that. So I think as long as, as, long as you guys uh, are okay with that philosophy where you can you know, waive certain requirements, and, and as long as we have the authority as staff to do that, I think um, I would rather have more in there so that if we did need it, we can ask for it, um, as long as we have the ability to waive it, waive some of the other requirements. So, so that's what I was going to ask when you brought that up. So it's not something we're going to waive unless we want it. Somebody asks, you know, one of us asks for it during a review process, yep. and uh, they say it'll be too difficult, we'll waive it. Right. But I would like to think that staff is going to be able to vet the situation yes. with the applicant long before it gets here and that it's not an actual waiver on our part. Right. We just won't ever see it. Right. Because you didn't it wasn't think it was necessary. necessary. Right. right. So, okay. so we do that now um, <coughs> and we have asked for things that aren't even in our regulations and usually as long as it's a reasonable request to address a particular issue, it's not uh, un unnecessary. But we do get people who come in who aren't familiar with, town, with the town and just submit the bare bones and that creates, you know, 
some conflicts where we're going back and asking because there's nothing in here that authorizes us to ask for that. So, um, and from a legal point of view, when it is a site plan, um, you know that be, a lot of times becomes the that, that's the only thing you can to deny a site plan. That's the only thing you can normally do to deny a site plan is if they don't meet these requirements. That's why I say it's more important right. that we have a more comprehensive list um, for those situations where you may have to deny something. Um, because you know there, there aren't a lot of reasons to deny a site plan unless they don't comply with these standards. But but just to confirm, right? So your letter to us, new, this new site plan proposal comes in, and you review it. It comes to us. We all discuss it. Your memo to us is not going to say uh, this is compliant except for two A three, two A six. 2B, 2D, 2F. Are you going to have to do that on every proposal? It, 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 if, if we've gone through an effort where we've asked for the information and it's important to us and they haven't done it, yes, I'm going to tell you that. Okay. Uh, if, if it's um, something we don't need for any reason or it doesn't benefit the project or uh, the town, yeah, we're not going to get into that level uh, of detail. But there are times when we are probably going to, you're going to see that in the memo, and that should probably be a red flag to you because we don't want to be in the, in the business of doing that. Yeah, I mean, we're dealing with one of these at work now where somebody's trying to get a special permit approved on the cheap, you know, and asking for waivers of, you know, half of the things required by the regulations, you know, and, oh, we'll just write a narrative explaining what's going on rather than showing you drainage, traffic, <laughs> you know, the use. <laughs> the use. <laughs> I, I think staff should be complimented on you know, the efforts that are are submitted here. Um, one thing I'm curious about, and this goes to the as built things, it's an issue that I've, I've had some discussion with you in the past about. I, I I did notice, and forgive me if you know it was my eyesight was was being affected, but I didn't notice any requirement in there for. Uh, the uh, for any as built uh, being submitted in a digital format so we are um, yeah we do we did add that we did yeah that's in there on the first page of the as built a digital copy of the final as built that is identical copy yes yeah, shall be submitted okay. in a PDF okay. so we've done that for all three of these we don't do that now we are trying to move ourselves so into the digital age at some point i would like to be able to have you guys get digital packages so we don't have to deliver paper to your house all the time where you can go to a location open up the files and review all that stuff we're not quite there yet but this is the first step uh, in, in that direction you know, in in construction agreements that i used to uh, write develop for for projects i was involved in uh, that was the standard requirement 20 years ago right that i would i would require builders to to submit to to us at the end of the project so. we've been asking people to submit it just as a courtesy some do some don't um, so um, that's why we'd like it in here so we have something to support our requests so we'll have a um, like a, a more formalized change order process probably in the future where when you do get those digital sets they can either mark it up with a PDF tool or resubmit the sheet cloud it or something just yep. so that because things change in on the site every day and some of those things could be rather important later on and even for just our basic um site plan review before yeah. it even comes to you guys um we would like that ability to get those um and be able to mark them up electronically and send them back yeah. um so that when we do a memo for you it's a much smaller memo it doesn't have every single thing where we've worked it out ahead of time with um and some of the firms are there, some aren't still. So it's mm -hmm. everybody's still we're still trying to bring everybody along. Can we talk a minute about the process? Sure. We go from here. Sure. I I just wanted uh, for the purposes of tonight. I don't need to get into every little um, you know piece of minutia. I just wanted to make sure there was a comfort level that we're going in the right direction. These still need. These are I wouldn't say they're a rough draft, but they still need. Uh, Quite a bit of work my version has been marked up over the last couple of days because i saw a bunch of things um, that need to be um, tweaked a little bit and cleaned up um, so i just wanted to make sure you know philosophically uh what i've explained to you is um something that nobody has you know um, 
any heartburn about. I did actually send an earlier draft of this to a couple of engineering firms just to get a, a reality check. Um, and I got some good feedback. Um, and, and I basically, you know, um, as long as there's the waiver provision and certain things are, you know, not applicable and they have that ability and not everything is automatically required no matter what, I think there's a level of um, comfort that, um, you know, this is um, not uh, not the end of the world for some of the, is there the firms. An, is there an acknowledgement of that fact in here somewhere? Um, that you, staff will use some discretion? There's, there needs to be some additional, you have um, in your existing regulations, not the appendix, you have um, waiver provisions already. I think I need to look at those and make sure the proper references are made and maybe that section might have to be um, strengthened a little bit to make it clear. Um, there was a, as at the beginning, the preamble uh, of the site plan that talks a little bit about flexibility, blah, blah, blah. I think that, that needs to be uh, maybe expanded a little bit to explain what that flexibility is by referencing the waiver section. Um, so I, there's some work to be done, but uh, um, in, in probably all three of the sections as it relates to, you know, some flexibility there to, 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 to you know, codify that a little bit better. Peter, have you had a developer come in the town and leave and go to another town because our requirements were no. too much? No. Our, as I say, our requirements are pretty low right now. Our requirements are too little. Right. We, <laughs> right. Yeah, no. right. This is too easy. I don't want to discourage anybody from coming here. And it's usually not the developer. These things are overwhelming. So say something up more up front. You're right. Yeah, it's not a developer. that It's the engineering firms. And most of them, as they say, already submit the lion's share of this stuff. And that's why I said earlier, we have looked at a variety of different plans from a couple of different engineering firms just to make sure we're not asking for, you know, we're not going over the top. And, and I can okay. tell you that we, ha we are not. So we've actually gone through those site plans, marked them up, kept lists, compared it to this. And um, where you, or you'll see in a lot of cases where I think it says if applicable, that's kind of a tag for maybe, maybe we're going over the top. Need to, yeah. 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 So. Um, talk to us at least yeah, and ask. Yeah, confirm that with us. Or maybe we should add some language in there, consult with staff on some of these provisions if you think, you know, we, we can work on that. Um, okay, so you're going you're gonna to work on it yep. a little bit more, but then yep. the next step is it is part of the zoning regs, right? Yep. So we'll have to go through a else. hearing. We'll have to send it out to CROG, um, you know, go through some public uh, input, have a hearing, you know, go through the normal uh, processes. Um, you know, this is pretty pretty boring stuff. I don't imagine it'll raise any level of uh, controversy. I will, once the final draft gets um, documented, send it out to some of those engineering firms if they want to comment on it so they know. Um, and whether they want to put it comments in writing or show up at the hearing, that's obviously up, up to them. But I, I can certainly uh, uh, do that as well just to um, get some uh, real world feedback as to whether some of these are um, reasonable or unreasonable. Rocky Hill just went through this process last year. Oh, so um, just so you know, um, they established a whole bunch of new uh, requirements. Um, so we looked at those uh, as well. Um, How long might it take to get through this process? Have you got a target? Uh, I haven't set a target yet. Just so you know, the sign regulations are going to be coming up for a hearing. Um, we haven't picked second meeting in October. So we're going to do that first, and then we'll um, probably come in with these either later in the year or early next year, um, so. Uh, Peter, I noticed that in your, you know, in your due diligence, you mentioned uh, a whole variety of sources that you've, uh, you've looked into or requested feedback from, et cetera. Yeah. Uh, but I didn't hear you mention any, you know, any of the you know, professional planning associations or, or associations of, of uh, land use uh, uh, planning agencies, that sort of thing. Uh, and sometimes such entities have uh, standard kinds of documents of this type. Yep. If you looked into that. The uh, APA, the American Planning Association, has a book, the Site Plan, site plan Standards or something like that effect, which I did look at too. So um, this, this has a variety of sources that we've looked at, so. Um, my two other two colleagues, 
uh, here. Richard did mention. Uh, my my colleague down down the way. Jules. When when you get into, how do you feel about these? I agree that it seems like what we have right now is too much too bare bones and not not up to up to date and comprehensive enough. And I just think uh, some level of enhanced detail is needed for us to be able to really evaluate and understand an application to determine if it complies, what the consequences will be, et cetera. And then I think on the as-built end, it's crucial that you be given some documentation to prove that as they actually built it, they have things in the right way, the setbacks are correct, they didn't go bigger than their approval, all that <laughs> kind of stuff. I mean, I think it, it, it's, it's administratively helpful and I think it keeps people to the, to the approvals basically without room for, for issues to come up like that. So, but I agree, I think we need to just look at the details and make sure that we're all comfortable with the end, end product. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I agree, and I also think that the, the approach of asking for more with the ability to waive it where it's not appropriate is the way to go. I mean, you don't want to be like Goldilocks and have the bed too soft and then the bed's too hard. You know, if, if there are, you know, if somebody's swapping out tenants, they don't really need to provide a new stormwater plan, you know, a new site utility plan. I mean, some common sense can can actually prevail sometimes um, but if there is a situation where you know staff feels that this information is really relevant you know for whatever reason if you know for example it hadn't been done right the first time um, you know you want to get that information you know when when there's you know a, a modification or a renovation or something like that at least it gives us the opportunity to ask for the information and and as peter said if you know people start showing a true reluctance to provide basic information then i you know, think it's kind of a red flag that there may be bigger problems um, you know likewise maybe we can avoid having site plans drawn on the backs of placemats for <laughs> <laughs> We actually have seen, you know, to the point where there was the scalloped outline on the. <laughs> <laughs> just one, one specific comment because I just happened to, to glance at it. Um, I would just ask you to, under the possible additional information under the proposed reg, even though I think the opening sentence is trying to say that the commission can require whatever it wants, if you then go down below, it almost looks like you're setting a standard of it's gotta be 50 parking spaces or 200 or more, whereas our current regs basically just flatly say we can require it if we think it's needed. So I just, maybe what you could say is if it's more than 50 or 200, it's presumed, but that the commission you know, has the ability to ask for it whenever it thinks yep. it's warranted or something. Okay. I never thought these uh Plan requirements would generate a Goldilocks reference when I we drafted them. But I was going to apparently enhance. I was going to enhance that a little further. I've worked with a couple of communities that have, uh, for example, when you've gone into page three on the as-built, once this process continues and is filtered through Inland Wetlands Conservation Commission, depending on the boards, or, or as I've seen a couple of towns where it's it's had to be cleared to three or four or five commissions to get the as-built done, to get the final CO done. Yes. It becomes quite cumbersome. Yes. And that with the building code enhancements that were done, which I personally feel are overkill on some of these designs for small residential structures, some of the cost estimates are exceeding 30 to 50% of an increase in surcharge. It's becoming the big bad wolf, if you want to pick out Goldilocks. Because <laughs> you uh, it's, it's really come extreme, and I'm really intrigued on the latitude definitions and the language that you put in there giving these waivers. I think it's critical, especially for a town like Weathersfield, and to maintain and continue proper growth, proper development. But since 2003, Peter, that's quite a while. So yes, it has, definitely needs to be refreshed. These, so just, uh, you re reminded me of, I spoke with an engineer today. He submitted a set of uh, plans and uh, they have to be revised, but he submitted 16 sets, you know, the full size. Um, and he told me that 
he, so he asked me, do I have to revise everything, submit a whole new six, set of 16? I said, you may have to, but we can talk about, you know, if you only change one or two sheets. He says, okay, but, yeah, please let me know. He goes, I just want you to know that the, uh, the copies, the cost for the copies for these 16 sets uh, was $800 for the paper copies. So the more we can go towards the electronic PDF submissions, that's just one example of some savings. You know, that's more than what they're going to pay us for the application fees to, to review it, um, just for the copies, never mind the engineering and everything like that. So I, it, that was kind of interesting to me that um, just going to an electronic uh, submission packet, uh, if we ever get to that point, <clears throat> could result in just those kinds of copy savings. And that's just for one set of the copies if you had to do it again you know so um yeah when we get a cup when we get a survey and send it out to copy it's like 27 dollars right. but if we send them the pdf it's 250 right so i mean is peter one other question is do, instead of having 16 full size could the nine of us live with a half size or reduced again it depends on the plan and how busy it is and when you can read it forever. but i think you and all the department yeah. heads need the full size i don't think we necessarily so on the on the first page this just people who are actually going to look at right, it right exactly, exactly. exactly. <laughs> so this this draft on the first page for the site plan is oh, all all applications 16 copies blah 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 uh to include four full size uh, in landscape view and 13 reduced sets which are normally 11 by 17 uh, and then 16 copies of all associated reports and supplemental information um, so I guess on, only other thought just based on what I've seen in other places if there's a massive drainage report for example yeah. I mean sometimes I've seen you just give two copies because staff is reviewing For it the and file. they're not giving it to yep. all the commission members you right know, maybe drainage is something we could Think about that traffic. On the other hand, I think we'd probably want yeah. to see that, or at least most of that. But. Yep. Yep. Yeah, everything except the last seventy-five right. pages, which are yes. yeah, 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 we don't quite need all the synchro print data. Ads. Oh, three people went left. <laughs> <laughs> Those traffic engineers. Yeah. You know, they are <laughs> terrible people. In towns that have that type of refined language, I've seen uh, delays and postponements for. Final constructions. You can't get the mortgage loan. You can't get the construction loans. Things go out two or three years before the CLs are issued because there's so many hands in the cookie jar. Because right. the regulations are so rigid. There's three or four towns that I know that I've worked with uh, personally. Yeah, they they make when you're at the end of the project, they make them submit an as built, and then you have to go back to the commission. The commission has to review everything that's been done. Yeah, that's definitely tripled the price and yeah. killed the, killed the local government. Kills process. the project, right? The appeals board. Yeah, no, we're not. Uh, we're not, not suggesting that. Darien, that. right? Uh, Pardon me. This is not just Darien you're talking. No, about. no, no. Yeah, it's killed well, all the commercial it, development. It does happen. There. It does happen often. It's easy to make everybody do everything instead of uh, saying, "Well, we'll give you that latitude because the guy next door got it." You know. Right. So, good luck in that language, Peter. Yep. Okay. All right. So I, uh, as I said, that would be the process. But I just wanted to make sure there wasn't, you know, an extreme. Um, you know, push back that this is too much or um, we don't think it's what we're asking for is unreasonable and obviously we can get into the minutia uh, at a later date once it's finalized, but um, Just right. Okay. Just right. <laughs> All right. Not Any, too hard. Anything else for Peter? All right. So moving on to the next topic, uh, the minutes uh, of August 7th. Any uh, Make a motion to approve if you want. Oh, okay. Second. All right. Well, thank you both. Uh, there are six of us who were there that evening. Tony, uh, you are not. But the other six of us, all those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? For, for this meeting, I'd love to see Tom noted as having made it at 7.03 so we can show that we made progress. <laughs> <laughs> I was just about to say that that's my favorite part. <laughs> 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 so, um, you know, just looking through it, <laughs> looking through it real quickly, I was reminded: has anything happened with Lucky Lose in the in the last month in um, terms of uh, looking at what the levels are? Um, there, it's in the it's uh, it's back onto the uh, table of the neighbor uh, and their attorney and their sound. Um, Lucky Lou is has agreed to do the test. 
put up the put up the tarp, have them come out with the machine, do the do the measurements. Uh, their sound person has been unavailable. There was just an email today. I think they must have known there was a planning and zoning meeting tonight, but there was an email this afternoon uh, asking uh, T.J. Donahue, the neighbor's attorney, uh, when when they want to do this. Um, so it's on his lap, and he's supposed to get back to her um, in the next day or two to set maybe something up as early as next uh, Monday or Tuesday. So, um, so that's kind of so where. So you think there's progress in a reasonable manner? Yeah, I, we had a we had a sit down. I uh, I brought the uh, interim town manager along for a little muscle, <laughs> and uh, to see if they, we could you know make, get them to realize it's at the level of the town manager. So. Um, and there seemed to be, uh, we had some frank conversations, let's just say, about m moving this along. And uh, uh, now we're waiting for the the, the, the neighbor's uh, sound person to pick a good date when they can be out there and do the test. And then see if it has any uh, beneficial impact so that we can move on from here. So, Staff reports and just a couple, applications. Just a couple of things. Um, you may have noticed Fun Zone is no longer with us. Building is gone, and they're working on uh, on the site uh, and foundation uh, work. Um, yeah, big holes down there. So yeah, it's uh, they made significant progress in the last uh, couple of weeks. Um, the uh, other thing is the apartments at two seventy five Ridge Road. They are uh, looking to get the first residents in there, maybe uh, by October first. So that. Uh, they've made um, some significant progress up there. Um, what else is going on that's significant? Um, storage building. The storage yes. building, uh, 1881 Berlin Turnpike, the gas station. If you've been up there, they, they're putting in the retaining walls around the gas station perimeter. Uh, the, they may not do the storage project. There's some talk about something else maybe, but um, but they're working um, they they had to you know redo regrade the whole site in order to do the gas station. But that uh, I was up there today. The retaining walls are starting to you know take shape. Um, and you do have a couple of applications. Cedar Mountain Stone and Mulch will be on your next agenda. Uh, they are proposing two buildings up there and various uh, 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 aspects of the site improvements with parking and display areas and that kind of thing. Webb Dean Stevens Museum uh, has also submitted their plans for their building addition, which is their education and visitor center. And then we have a, another application which didn't make this agenda f for the um, Buzz Willard's barn on Main Street, which is 141 Main Street. Um, that was only approved for, for office space. There's a retailer who wants to go into the barn. Um, so that will also be on your agenda uh, at the next meeting. So a couple of things at next time around. Rich? What, what's going on with the Carmen Anthony's? It looks like that work has stopped. Actually, I think it's going backwards rather than stopped. Um, the Tyvex being peeled off the building? Yeah, I've asked the building official to um, see what. Uh, there's um, Unfortunately, there is minimal, um, there's, there's minimal authority as long as they are doing something. Doing something. To move it along. Like the There's house. not a termination on a building permit, so in the code there isn't a lot. But we have asked him to. Um, they may um, need something from this commission at, at some point, um, so that would be an opportunity to have a hard conversation about moving that project along. Um, there is a building permit, right? So there's there so is a building plans, permit so for a certain kind. There isn't even a floor plan yet. I checked with the building department. Um, so the interior, it's all exterior stuff and interior demolition. There's no plan, uh, uh, building plan, floor plan at this point that I can even, um, you know. So, um, yeah, we've, we have received numerous uh, complaints, I guess, about that. Uh, so hopefully um, as winter approaches, they're going to have a sense of urgency to button everything up and, and move it along. So. Um, it's almost like a hobbyist weekend type situation up there. So I've asked the building department to do what they can. So they're going to see what they can do about getting the attention of the the new owner there and moving that along. I think we talked about it. I'm not sure that the that uh, HVAC company moving into Blades didn't. 
come to pass? So I've had a, several conversations with other uh, interested um, parties. Uh, no one's filed anything yet. So um, Blades obviously is is now out, um, and the building is. Uh, however, the property owner has put some money into, uh, I think, a new roof and has done some other things, removed some tanks and things like that. So, um, which is a good sign that hopefully uh, they'll be able to make another deal with somebody else. But we have had couple of people who have come in to kick, kick the tires to see what we thought about particular projects so uh, something may happen uh, shortly uh, there's um, the uh, Belden house which is the bluish purple building in front of Comstock is under contract with somebody so that may be coming in uh, soon um, so that's the other news on Main Street so <clears throat> Is that escape room place opening soon? Or? Yeah, I haven't seen a lot of work going on there, but yeah, it um, says coming soon on the door. That's yeah. what I noticed. Yes. They probably can't get past all the people picking up and dropping off at the Russian math school. Right. <laughs> I went through the Burger King drive through Yeah, if you, hit, night, if you hit that at the wrong like, time. Right. They, they were all parked there. They were parked in the brick building on the other side. Oh. It was a backup onto the highway. It's like, wow. Yeah. They come and go at the same time. So it's working just the way they presented it to us? Mm. <laughs> like, yeah. well, don't they always? Just the way we all <laughs> so, so, you know, I've, I've often wondered if, as part of our process, we could ask for an after-it's-built traffic assessment. Mm. And, I, and I actually thought of it in the context of they already, ha they already have their CEO, they're done, you know, it's two years past, and it's part of our requirements on them is it appropriate to put something, some requirement on them where two years later that they come back and say, this is how it ended up versus, you know, and of course you have in the records how we suggested it might be. Um, and if that's not, then I guess I wonder if it's appropriate or possible to put the onus on the new person who comes for something to say, that person over the, as part of your work, I want you to go look at some last development and do a summary traffic assessment of what's going on over there and we'll simply take it and just start a process by which somebody next one in line has to go look at the last one in line or something like that and it's kind of funky but I, I did actually think about that because i went by ridge road the other day and said god i hope this works the way we were it was presented to us i mean it, in the cases where somebody's making a significant investment like ridge road i mean that gets a little dicey but I mean, it's not unusual for you to attach a time frame to a permit and it either expires or they have to come in for a, an annual review or something like a post, you know, CO review. Um, You're talking about not for the per permit? You can not, a no, I'm talking about something that comes through planning and zoning mm -hmm. so that you can tweak things or I wouldn't, you know, have the permit expire because, you know, the guy's investing $10 million. You right. can't really do that. But you could come in and have the traffic... Um, conditions, if you want, for example, uh, reviewed, um, have their, with the caveat that their traffic engineer has to come back in and, you know, actually document existing traffic conditions and see how they compared and maybe uh, you're, they're required to, you know, do something ab above and beyond what they thought they were supposed to do. Um, I, I warn you to, I would advise you to be very careful about when you would do something like that, but um, when you've got some controversy and you want to make sure you keep your fingers in it, um, you know, that would certainly be one way of, uh, of doing it. Yeah. I mean, the hard part is, you know, once you've discovered you have a problem, what, what can you make them do about it? Right. It's like, you know, please board off seven of your apartments because you've created <clears throat> too much traffic. Right. So, so really just becomes a learning tool for us. Yeah. The next time a traffic person comes in and says X, Y, Z, we can go, yeah, right. You know, or, yeah. or, yeah. You know. yeah, it's like gridlock has returned to off road and not street and the Berlin turnpike because summer's over and that's when we remember all the people talking about those apartments so. Mm -hmm. so solve that way pete sure i'll come on yeah. it come on it <laughs> <laughs> hit the knees to do that there you go <laughs> sitting it quietly done. yeah all right anything else otherwise i'll entertain a motion to adjourn so moved Everybody wants to do second. that one. And second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Sure.